Hi there. In our last lesson, we looked at Balaam. Balaam was uh, a man who was able to speak on behalf of God. Um, Balak was the king of Moab, and Balak was afraid of the Israelites who were approaching his territory, the land that he was the king of. And in rightfully so, he sought to protect his people. The way that he sought to protect his people was to hire Balaam to pronounce a curse on the people of God. Balaam only was able to say what God allowed him to say. And he clearly told Balak, this is all I'll be able to say. And Balaam was persuaded, probably because of the promise of money, Balaam was persuaded to come to Balak, oversee, look on a high hill overlooking the people of Israel, and look over the land and pronounce a curse. So Balaam went. He uh, had difficulty getting there. You'll review from last lesson with his donkey. And finally, the donkey spoke to him. You would think that Balaam would have got the hint. Two times God said, don't, or one time God said, don't go. And said, if you go, you're only going to say what I tell you to say. And then an angel with a flaming sword is preventing his journey. The donkey saw this. The donkey finally spoke. You would think that Balaam would have got it. You would think that Balak would have just resigned himself. But Balak was a good king in trying to protect his people, even if it worked out to going against God's miracles. So in the, the, the continuing story, we're looking at Numbers chapter 23. If you have a Bible, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read a couple portions. And I would like for you to follow along. So let's look together at Numbers chapter 23. <clears throat> so in Numbers 23, we have a number of oracles. Now, an oracle would be a special message that was pronounced over this group of people. And the first oracle comes on, and there's big fanfare. Balaam is brought up to oversee part of the people of Israel, and he's ready. Balak says, okay, curse him, curse him. And he's all ready to curse these people. And remember, he's only allowed to speak what God tells him to speak. So let's look at a key part of this verse. Chapter 23, picking up at verse 7. From Aram, Balak has brought me, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. Here is the crux. Verse 8. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? Balaam has been offered a plenty of amount of money to curse these people. Balaam says, I'll only say what God allows me to say. And here it is, what God says. God says, how can I curse one who has been blessed by God? Think, the promise of Abraham, those who bless your people will be blessed. Those who curse your people will be cursed. Balak is bringing a curse upon himself by cursing the people of Israel or asking Balaam to curse the people of Israel. So Balak decides to, to move Balaam to another location for a second try at this. Let's see what happens in the second location. We're going to pick up our reading at chapter 3, verse 19. So here's the second oracle. God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, 
and will he not fulfill it? Some people are sending messages. Verse 20, Behold, I received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I will not revoke it. A second time, Balak wants a curse pronounced upon the people. And a second time, Balaam just blesses the socks off those Israelites. Balak, I'm sure, was right upset. Balak asked, Do not curse them at all, and do not bless them at all. After the second time, it's just like, don't don't even speak anymore. So we come to the third occasion. The third time. Balak takes Balaam to another place. And in this time, we see um, how, how God instructs Balaam to speak. So we have the third oracle. This is the third oracle, and we're going to pick it up at chapter 24 at the end of verse 9. We'll just get the final sentence of this oracle. Blessed are those who bless you, and cursed are those who curse you. Speaking over the Israelites, hearkening back to that covenant promise made to Abraham, Israel was being blessed. And anybody who blesses Israel would themselves be blessed. Anybody who curses Israel would themselves be cursed. Three, three times. You would think they get the message. Of course. We move to the final oracle. They don't call it the fourth oracle in our headline. Notice that? It's not called the fourth one. It's called the final. In the fourth one, or the final one, we're picking up our reading at chapter 24, verse 16. The oracle of him who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheph. A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. That's a prophecy. It's looking ahead to someone in the future who is going to crush the forehead of Moab. Can you think of anybody in Israelite history who could re be referred to as a star coming out of Jacob? A scepter shall rise out of Israel. A scepter would be a symbol of a king. So it would have to be a king. There's only one king that I know of that developed and had a symbol of a star. That symbol is still used on the Israeli flag today, called the Star of David. So Balaam is prophesying there is going to come a king who is going to absolutely crush Moab. Did it happen? Ha <laughs> ha, funny you should ask. Let's look at 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 8, 2 Samuel chapter 8, and I just want to read one verse, um, two verses, let's pick it up at verse 1. After this, David defeated the Philistines and sub subdued them, and David took Megtheh Amah out of the hand of the Philistines, and he defeated Moab, and he measured them with a line, making them lie down on the ground. Two lines he measured to be put to death, and one full line to be spared. And the Moabites became servants of David 
and brought tribute. So half the army was completely put to death. They laid down, they were forced to lay down on the ground in two lines, and one line was put to death, all of them. Complete fulfillment of the prophecy that Balaam pronounced. It was years into the future, hundreds of years actually, that God was faithful to that promise that a star and a scepter directly pointing to David. With the failure of cursing the Israelites, the Moabites went to a different tactic. They sought to bring about the worship of Baal into the people of Israel. That was idolatry. They also brought about and encouraged the Israelites to have inappropriate relations with Moabite women. We see this in chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. And behold, one of the people of Israel came and brought a Midianite woman to his family in the sight of Moses and the sight of the whole congregation of the people while they were weeping in the entrance of the tent of meeting. Sin had crept into the people of Israel. The sin of idolatry and the sin of adultery, both those sins crept in and it was becoming commonplace, so common that there was no shame in it. Except, we read in the next verse, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Aaron had passed away. Eleazar was the high priest. This man named Phineas sees this affront to the standard and godliness that God called his people to do. And he picked up a spear. You can read this for yourself. And he took the spear and drove it through both the man and the women, or the woman, as they were together, and put them both to death. Rather grotesque. What happened to Baal? Let's look for the answer to that in Revelation. In the book of Revelation, right at the end of the Bible, there are seven churches that received a letter. A letter was written by the Apostle John to these seven churches, and we have the church of Pergamum. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, we hear a message that was given to this church in Pergamum. Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. But I have a few things against you is being said to this church in Pergamum. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to be to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. Balaam was the one who gave the idea to Balak. According to this verse, verse, Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, Bala, who, Balaam taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols, that's idolatry, and practice sexual immorality. Balaam knew the promises of God for his people but was gripped by the desire for money that he found a way for God to punish his people Israel. So what happened to Balaam? Did he just ride off into the sunset, live happily ever after as a wealthy man? He might have been a wealthy man for a period of time, the story, this story takes place close to the end of the 40 years. Joshua led the people of Israel into the promised land. And then let's look at Joshua chapter 13. And here we find Balaam again. Joshua chapter 13, starting to read at verse 22. Joshua 13, verse 22. So. 
the land is being conquered by Joshua and the Israelite armies. And it says, Balaam also, the son of Beor, so it's the same Balaam, the one who practiced divination, was killed with the sword by the people of Israel among the rest of their slain. Balaam was judged for his sinful behavior in leading the people of God away from God. He was judged for attempting to curse God's people, even though God couldn't allow them to be cursed. I love it when the New Testament and other passages of Scripture comment on the Scriptures that we're studying. The, commentary, the best commentary of the Bible is the Bible itself. And when we look at various passages and can we compare them, we see that God had a plan all along. And there was absolutely nothing that could have thwarted God's plan. God has a plan for your life, too. Nothing can change it. Rest in the night. Have a good day.